if you're watching this video, you're probably one of the few unlucky motherfuckers stuck on the first mission who need some guidance. If not, feel free to skip ahead because I will share my thoughts about this game at the end of the video. Oh yeah, also, additionally, I've had some issues with my internet over the past bullshit. couple of weeks due to a vermin infestation. So the video is cobbled together like a Frankensteinos monster. Oh, and by the way, I made a comically small chicken sandwich with cheese and placed it in the trap. And it worked! <laughs> anyway, let's move on with the walkthrough. Okay, so we arrive at the building where the murder took place. Armed with our forensics kit, we are ready to start our investigation. And we will fucking go! Let's just carefully try and press the backpack button, because we don't want to accidentally recalibrate our height. But first, we need to get inside. We take out our badge and begin ringing doorbells, trying to gain entry. Open the door! A few moments later... OPEN THE DOOR, God damn it! After persuading one tenant to let us in, Thank you. We make a beeline for apartment 202. We open the door, surveying to the apartments. We make a brief stop at 201, the neighbor's place. We attempt to gather some information, but the neighbor is unwilling to talk. Hello, I'm Detective David Slade with the RSPD. I'd like to ask you a few questions, please. Go away! I do not want to... Now we stand before the apartment 202, the site of the altercation. Hello? No answer greets our knock, but a conveniently placed key under the mat allows us to proceed. Using this key, we open the mailbox and discover a Chinese puzzle box inside. Upon solving it by pressing a series of buttons, we find another key. The one for the apartment this time. Alongside the key, there's a note mentioning something about dates, which we make a mental note of. Dates is the key. Entering the apartment. Pirate Charm Serial, complete with puzzle on the back. There's evidence of a disturbance in the kitchen. Chairs knocked over and, most tellingly, a blood splatter on the floor. We followed the SOP and secured this evidence, photographing the scene and collecting blood samples. A blood-covered frying pan. Was this the weapon of choice or the start of something greater? I need to keep looking. Our discoveries include a frying pan, which might have been used in the attack. Damn, this print is too smudged. Looks like there was another person here with Mr. Mathers at the time of the incident. And the mug that likely was used by the attacker. We capture fingerprints and other crucial details, storing them securely. Damn it. There's no rigid detail on this print. Not enough for a positive ID, at least. Diving deeper into our investigation, we search the cupboards and stumble upon newspaper cutouts, which could be incriminating. A news clipping that reads, Slain Woman Identified. What's going on here? A book of unsolved crimes dated 1969 to 1976. Throughout the apartment we uncover more clues, which will undoubtedly prove invaluable later. A small drop of blood. I should follow the trail and see where it goes. Blood droplets catch our eye, leading us to the bathroom door in the hallway. A 
another small amount of blood. The door to the bathroom is locked, and the handle is also covered in blood. We document these findings with our camera before delving into our forensics kit for a thorough examination. The bedroom is our next destination. Here, signs of disturbance suggest someone might have been rummaging for something. The desk was completely ransacked, and there's clothing all over the floor. An answering machine offers potential evidence that we promptly collect. Hey, Jack, it's Bill. You are right. The killings in the late 1960s and 1970s are connected. The MO is identical. Be careful, Jack. Under the pillow we discover another key. This one unlocks the bathroom where we are met with a grisly scene. The victim nailed to the wall in a haunting representation reminiscent of Jesus Christ's crucifixion. Time to get to work. I need to do this by the book. Before attending to the victim, we focus on collecting all evidence from the bedroom. Among our findings is another newspaper cutout which we carefully store in our forensics kit. Weighs heavily on mom. Examining the walls, scratch marks near a painting lead us to a hidden safe. I wonder what caused these. This, this book shows me the dates a book of unsolved crimes. Remembering the earlier clue from the living room, we input the code 6976. The safe opens Open to reveal case files, which we secure. A fully detailed dossier on one Charles Jenkins. Transitioning to the bathroom, we meticulously collect evidence from the area surrounding our victim. Oh, this man, includes footprints and a blood-soaked towel, which we document. Footprints. The killer must have been barefoot at the time of the murder. A blood-soaked towel. The killer must have used this to clean up. I guess the killer must have washed up here. What the hell was that? I better In the check. midst of our investigation, a figure emerges from the bedroom closet. A potential suspect who hastily discards a knife in the hallway. Hey, wait a second. This knife was not here before. On phase, we continue to gather evidence, taking photographs and collecting any okay, relevant hey, items. It looks like Mr. Mathers ripped out a chunk of the killer's hair. Poor bastard couldn't even scream. Does that mean he was alive when he was nailed up here? This must be the wound inflicted by the frying pan. The pain must have been excruciating. The note reads, you should have minded your own business. Prominent among our findings are additional newspaper cutouts. An old news clipping. It reads, hint. Psychopath killer is plotting his next attack. We lift fingerprints from the drop knife and store the weapon as evidence. A perfect print. I got you now, you bastard. Now I just need to find something to compare it to. We then spot another cutout, cunningly concealed in the shadows beneath the stand. What the fuck? A news clipping from eight years ago. It reads, another body found. Okay, I finished processing the scene. After securing this final piece of evidence, dispatch. we reach out to Go dispatch, ahead. realizing we may need backup due to the potential Corner threat posed by the armed DA, suspect. Taking minutes. our badge in hand, we cautiously Charles proceed. Jenkins, this is Detective Slade with the RSPD. Open up now. 
With the door now open, our attention is drawn to the cock table. A bunch of beer cans. Dear God, this guy smokes a lot. Battery's dead, but I bet there's lots of useful stuff on there. Well, well, well. Mr. Jenkins, I assume. Nice to finally put a face to the man of the hour. Noting the fingerprints on the can, we consider the matching them with those on the knife. A nice clean lift. If this matches the print we found in the coffee mug in room 202, there'll be... The bedroom now empty indicates we've gathered all the essential evidence up to this point. Okay, doc, we got everything. We got everything. Our investigation then leads us to the maintenance room to retrieve a spare key for the basement. With key in hand, we venture into the basement, our gun drawn and ready. We all know how most of them. <laughs> Shit! Charles Jenkins, come up now with your hands up. Stop playing around. Running out of places to hide, asshole. Son of a bitch. Enough of this cat and mouse crap. Stop playing games and come out now. We ensure all exits are barricaded, intending to corner the suspect. With him trapped, confrontation is inevitable. Brandishes a butcher's knife, but after a tense standoff, he ultimately surrenders, allowing us to take him into custody. Drop the knife and turn around and get down on your knees and put your hands behind your head. Do it now. Charles Jenkins, you're under arrest for murder. And there's that. Matters. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and won't be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You cannot afford an attorney. In the sea of VR games on Steam, this one really stands out with its unique gameplay. I'm a big fan of crime drama and mystery. Think of the CSI series and such. So needless to say this game has caught my attention. I especially love the whole evidence gathering procedure feature and how you have to look for every detail to uncover what lies beneath the crime scene. You can definitely see all of that in the walkthrough part of this video. The only major downside of this game that I could think of is its length. It would have been really cool if it had an entire season of murder mysteries like catching a serial killer and with every mission getting closer and closer to capturing him. It might be a tall order to make it right for a small studio and I understand that the developer has decided to go for quality rather than quantity with this one. The game definitely has some problems. The controls do frustrate me at times. Sometimes you push the forensics kit away when you want to open it or stand in a doorway trying to figure out how the door works. The graphics look okay. I like that the game went with a realistic design rather than a cartoony one, no matter the limitations the developer had. Nothing seems to be out of place and the environment looks like a place that could exist in the real life. Sure, you will see some quirky stuff like a lack of clutter or a low poly model or a low res texture, but these are just small things that can be easily fixed in future games. And developer, I absolutely wish you good luck with your game development, please don't stop. I believe you've got something special here, you kind of scratched that itch that I had for a proper murder mystery game. 
I'm just a regular motherfucker making videos online. So hit that like and subscribe button. What is this game doing to me? Like, don't fucking get it. Like, what in the shit is this? Like, come on. Is it bug? Like, what the hell is going on? What in the fucking fuck? Oh fuck! 